Welcome back to They Reminisce Over You. I'm Christina. And I'm Miguel. This episode, we're continuing our series on beefs and hip hop. Last time we talked about Nas and Jay-Z and their decade long beef. And this time we're going to be talking about Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim. Also decades long beef. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, still, they're like on their second decade now. Yeah. So we'll be getting into that. <laughs> it's been a while. Are you ready to just jump into it? Let's do it. So to tell you the truth, I mean, I knew they had beef, but I never really knew specifics. Well, that I just seems knew to they be, didn't like each other. Yeah, that seems <laughs> to be the case with everybody. Yeah, so even just trying to find um, like how it started, the background, everyone's just kind of basically saying the same thing. And it's kind of leads to we don't really know much. So right. this is pretty much all I could find <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, they've known each other for a while, even mm-hmm. went to the same high school for a little while. But little Kim's like, I don't know, like three, four years older than Foxy. So little Kim was probably on her way out as Foxy was coming in. But, you know, they've known each other since they were teenagers. They seemed friendly. They even did a song together, the No One Else Total Remix. So this is like 95 now. Then both of their albums came out in 96, a week apart from each other. They appeared on The Source together, although they appeared on The Source together, but they were interviewed separately. Yes. But for the most part, up until 97, they seemed friendly. They seemed to have nice things to say to each other in public, mm-hmm. at least. But then Def Jam CEO at the time, Lior Cohen, had offered them a deal to do a Thelma and Louise album right. together, which one or both turned down. And that's sort of when people were like, huh, there's got to be a reason why one would turn down money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He allegedly offered 500K to each of them mm-hmm. to, to do the album. So. Right. You know, that's a nice chunk to turn It is, down. especially in 97. Yeah. <laughs> so that was when people started thinking, hey, maybe these two don't like each other. And still, we have no idea why. There's a couple of theories, mm-hmm. but nothing solid. Like the, the first theory is from their album cover. Mm-hmm. Like they both have on the same outfit on the inside of each of their album covers. Um I think her name is Kim Osorio. Yep. That used to write for the source. Mm-hmm. She couldn't confirm it, but she also says that someone told her that one borrowed it from the other and never returned it. And then wore it in the album. Yeah. That <laughs> sounds like some hip hop folklore shit because <laughs> they're not the same size. Like Foxy Brown is, or at the time, wasn't a very big woman. Uh-huh. Lil' Kim was way too small. So I don't see them wearing the same outfit. So I can't buy that well, theory. Well, I mean, they were wearing the same yeah, outfit, but, but not, not necessarily the, the exact the physical literal, copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the same outfit. Because Lil' Kim's tiny. Yes. I mean, not that Foxy is big, but she's like a average size woman. She's yeah. taller. Yeah, she's Lil much Kim taller. So like there's short. no way they could fit the <laughs> very same outfit. They have the same outfit <laughs> in that both of them have it. Yeah. But not this one outfit you that they were sharing. sharing clothes, like literally sharing clothes. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know if I buy that one as much. And especially since the albums came out pretty much at the same time, it couldn't be like one saw it. And right. Unless maybe they had accidentally had the same stylist. But then still that wouldn't make sense because why would the stylist put them in the same outfit? Yeah, I'm thinking that it was a hot outfit for the time. Mm-hmm. It was probably something brand new. Mm-hmm. And whoever the stylist was, Mm -hmm. the buyer who gave it to him was like, nobody else has this. Right. And then the other one stylist (laughs) come in, nobody else has this. And they both end up wearing it on the album. It happens. Yeah. Hey, I have some friends where (laughs) we've ended up buying the same thing (laughs) Uh, unexpectedly. It happens. (laughs) So I don't know if I buy that theory of them sharing one outfit. Yeah. And the other one was pissed off. Well, the other theory sounds more plausible. Okay. Which was Foxy was allegedly supposed to be part of Junior Mafia. Right. Oh, I can't remember who I saw in an interview talking about this. But uh, probably Clark Kent. Ah, yes. And he said that Kim was upset and they end up having a fight at Daddy O Studios. He seems like a reliable source. Yes, because he <laughs> basically helped find Junior Mafia right. and Biggie. And he's Foxy Brown's cousin. Right. So if anybody has any idea what's going on, he would be the best bet. 
Because he knows both of them quite well. (laughs) But I also read that he's never asked either of them what the problem was. See, I'm so mad because I lost my notes, as I told you, because I had the link to the interview where he was talking about this, but I somehow deleted my notes. But he said he felt bad for not never really asking, but he didn't want to ask because he had ties with both of them. So he just kind of wanted to stay out of it. But if anybody would know... (laughs) He would be the closest one other than Kim and Foxy themselves. Well, obviously, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So that one sounds more plausible. And I also think, you know, they both came out at the same time. They're both women. You know, people are just going to compare. It's just the usual. You breed the competition and they just kind of don't like each other. And maybe after a while, they get tired of being compared to each other and whatnot. So it could be a mix of maybe all of that. (laughs) Yeah, because their careers were kind of like in parallel too. They came out at the same time time like kim was doing get money and Mm -hmm. players anthem at the same time foxy brown is doing i shot you with ll and Mm -hmm. touch me tease me Mm -hmm. and ain't no no nigga Mm -hmm. so their careers were actually Mm -hmm. trending at the same time and at the same pace and like you said the albums came out a week apart so just that alone is gonna create some competition yeah and they sort of had the similar style in the sense that they were both young they were both like very sexy and stuff so it's kind of natural that people would just compare them yeah and they were both put on by 1a and 1b of new york hip-hop biggie and jay-z exactly so there's a lot of layers Mm -hmm. to it my personal opinion i think it is like you mentioned the junior mafia thing because apparently foxy was in junior mafia first mm-hmm. and daddy o was putting them together and for whatever reason they decided that they wanted kim rather than foxy yeah. i could see that being like some animosity and some jealousy there right. even though she ended up getting put on by clark with jay-z and mm-hmm. whatnot so i could see that being some i don't like her yeah just and again, me. remember, they were very young, yeah. too. Like, Foxy was, like, 14 when she started uh, working with Jay-Z, I think, right? Like, she was 14, 15. I think it recorded. was 15 when it came out. Right. And then Lil' Kim, maybe, she was, I think she was 19 when her album came yeah. out. So she must have been, you know, 17 or so when right. this all started. So just think of how you weren't in high school. Right? <laughs> exactly. This is literally... <laughs> High school girls yeah. beefing with each other. Yeah. Like and it the, just happens the to be. The popular girls. Right. Or, you know, the pretty popular girls that everybody is like, she's prettier than you right. and whatever. <laughs> like, you know, you kind of forget how young they were mm-hmm. because especially since it's been going on for so long and then. We were young at the time, too, right. so them being young didn't seem any different from us <laughs> exactly. being young. It's like, we're all grown, duh. <laughs> <laughs> but now you look back and you're like, they were teenagers yes <laughs> literal teenagers couldn't even <laughs> buy alcohol legally <laughs> All right. So nothing really popped off, Mm -hmm. at least on the music level, until two years later Mm -hmm. when Kim did a verse on Play Around. And here's a quick sidebar. Your man, Harv Pierre. I knew you were going to bring him up. (laughs) (laughs) He is reckless with these hooks. So you got the you don't want to play around. Yeah. Play around with me. Oh, boy. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. So he's got that one. The uh the Black Rob one, you know the one. I dare no. Yes, yeah, I, I dare, dare you. <laughs> do come against me. <laughs> but because of this is a Miro, the Bodega Boys <laughs> podcast, I can only remember Miro's version <laughs> and not the real version. <laughs> yeah, he was out here doing some wild shit with these hooks. <laughs> There's one on G Depp's album. Like, come on, you, you just real reckless with this. <laughs> but anyway, back to <laughs> the little kid and Foxy beef. So she does that verse Mm -hmm. and also, again, on the Notorious K.I.M. song. Actually, when we go back to the Lil C song, Play Around, I was listening to her verse. I don't know. To me, it just sounded so generic because most of the stuff I was reading more pointed towards Diddy saying, what did he say? Stop trying to sound like her bitches. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like everybody was pointing more towards Diddy, kind of like, in case you don't know who she's talking about, I guess. Because to me, when I just heard the song, I was like, I would not have really thought. Which goes back to what I said during that Source Awards episode, how mm-hmm. Diddy is always throwing stones and trying to hide his hand. <laughs> but I don't know why everybody's saying I'm starting shit. It's because you all here starting shit. That's why. 
Yeah. Because, like I said, everything I read was like, and Diddy said this rather than Kim said this. Yeah. Like I just said, (laughs) I tried to listen to her verse and I'm like, I don't hear it. Like I would have not have listened to this and said, oh, she coming for Foxy. Yeah. You know? And that tends to be the case with a lot of these diss tracks. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of it's never direct. Yeah. It's always somebody assuming that these lines are about them. Hit dogs holler. As Basically. They say. Because especially with rap music, part of it is the bravado. Part right. of it is the I'm better than all of you. Yeah. So it can be generic, I guess. But it can, <laughs> you know, if it hits, it hits. Yeah. Well, <laughs> on the other side of that, a lot of these are directed at people, but they just don't want to come out and say it at right. the same time. So, yeah. so it goes both ways. Yeah. Okay. So then back to Notorious Kim in 2000, that one, she seemed to have something more specific to say. She said, this chick running around that stink ass gap, blah, 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 blah. There's more. Yeah. Like, it still sounds generic. But it does, at the same time, sound like she's talking about somebody. Right. And if you wanted to fit Foxy Brown, it could. Right. So she's like, you ain't a star. Your record company knows that. So I can't remember. This was 2000. So I don't know if there was any, like, label issues at the time with Foxy. I was trying to look it up, but I couldn't tell because I always Not that I remember. Yeah. So I don't know if she just said that just to say that or if there were actually some record label issues. Yeah, not that I'm aware of. So then that came out, which resulted in Foxy coming back with a verse on Capone and Noriega's Bang Bang. Yep. So this was extremely direct. So it this, was. This one, there was no trying to figure out who's talking about what. Right. Because she actually called out you and Diddy. Exactly. Y'all kill me with that subliminal shit. Like I said <laughs> about his Source Awards stuff. Yeah, there's more in the song, but that was the line that was like, all right, we know exactly yeah. what she's talking about. It's like there are no questions anymore. <laughs> yeah. She's talking about Kim and Diddy. Mm-hmm. And that leads to a shooting yeah. outside of Hot 97. Hot 97, always in the mix. They are. And that's when somebody in Kim's crew shot at somebody in the component Noriega crew. He gets hit in the back. Police show up. Mm-hmm. Kim's like, I don't know nothing. Yeah. I wasn't with these dudes. I wasn't even here. I just got here. So basically, she was upstairs doing an interview and Capone and Noriega. Actually, Noriega wasn't there. It was no. just Capone and some of their crew yep. was coming in because they were supposed to come in and do an interview or something after. And then Kim's crew had some words with them because Foxy's Bang Bang verse was on their album. On their, their album. So that was how that sparked. And then the shooting happened. Yeah. Which then, as you were saying, Kim's like, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't there. So-and-so wasn't there. And so-and-so wasn't there. <laughs> Even though there's video of right. all three of them standing there yep. in front of the station. So she didn't want to rat on her friends. So I guess she thought she was protecting them, but that didn't work out too well for <laughs> it her. It did not. Foxy was like, I ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> This is not me. I may have started it with my lyrics, but I wasn't there. Yeah, because she wasn't even there. And she says she tried to get Russell Simmons, who, because she was at Def Jam at the time, and well, so was he, to help her extend an olive branch to Lil' Kim. Right. And Kim was like, nah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want nothing to do with you, bitch. So I think from what I could gather, Lil' Kim just did not respond. Yeah. So this was in 2001, but the law takes a long time. Right. So she ended up getting a uh, sentence for uh, perjury yeah. in 2005, stemming from this. But um, she did get a little reality TV show out of this. <laughs> she did. Countdown to Lockdown. <laughs> I remember watching it at the time, but I don't remember anything about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I can't remember if I watched the whole thing that I remember it. And so this just covered her last 14 days before going into right. prison. So she was sentenced to a year and a day for lying about people's whereabouts. <laughs> that <day. laughs> When you're on video, tape, I <laughs> yeah. wasn't there. Okay, Kimberly. I rewatched a clip where she was uh, reshooting her lighters up video. Okay. And she showed up to the set like four or five hours late or something. <laughs> and then the footage that I saw them shoot, I'm like, this isn't in the lighters up video. So that leads me to believe that they ended up reshooting the lighters up video Again, anyway. But yeah, there's clips and stuff floating around on the internet if you want to see Kim's 14 days before lockdown. I will, just to (laughs) have it spark some memories, because I did watch it when it came on. Yeah. I just don't remember anything about it right now, because old. (laughs) Anyways, so that's that. (laughs) 
I was watching a video of Capone. I think it might have been when he was on Drink Champs mm -hmm. and he was talking about the shooting. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned how that shooting happened. And then a couple years later, the exact same thing happened with the game at 50 Cent when they had their shooting outside of Hot 97 mm -hmm. as well with the G Unit and the yep. GU Not Crews. <laughs> he said that all Hot 97 has to do is book these groups two hours apart. Yeah. Instead of having them coming back, back to, to back, back just so you can have them on the air immediately after one leaves. He's mm -hmm. like, all of that could have been just handled differently and no one would have got yeah. shot. No one would have gone to jail right. if you just book them separately or have them come through two different entrances. Yeah. He's like, everybody's coming in and out of the same door and it happened twice. So they they played a role in it as well. I think that might have been the same interview, too. Or another one. He was talking about how him and Lil C's were talking about it. Because, you know, Lil C's was there when Tupac got shot. And then he was there with the little Kim yeah. CNN shooting. He was just like, not again. <laughs> <laughs> and him and Kim didn't speak for years after yeah. that either. Oh, Like, they recently just started talking mm -hmm. again, maybe two years ago. Why? Because he had to testify. Oh. And apparently he was like, yeah, Kim was there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and so she stopped talking to Lil C's and yeah, they didn't speak till like either last year or two years ago. He's like, I ain't perjuring myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but how could she say she's not there if she was there doing an interview? That's the problem. Everybody knew she was there yeah. and they had video footage yeah. from like security cameras across the street and in the building. Right. Like we know you were there. I don't know. Well, I guess she thought she could get away with it. We gonna ride on this lie. <laughs> Basically. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> She's like, nobody going to jail today. Yep. We weren't here. <laughs> we recorded that two weeks ago. Well, interestingly enough, around the same time that Kim was getting ready to go to the big house, Foxy suddenly lost her hearing. <laughs> right why are you so, laughing <laughs> are, are you saying that Wait. Lil Kim had something to do you with Foxy's what? hearing no 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 I wasn't but I remember just seeing random tweets and someone said that Lil Kim put a hex on her <laughs> I don't know if this was just a joke or if this was some uh, kind of actual like rumor or story but <laughs> I just made the connection right now when I said oh. that maybe she did put a hex on her because she just woke. She said she literally woke up one day and could not hear shit. Yeah. <laughs> at the same time, Lil Kim's going to jail. I didn't realize it oh, was man. at the same time. I didn't until literally just now I'm looking at my notes. I'm like, oh, both of it says 2005. So this is a good thing to point out. <laughs> See, they're they're connected. <sighs> mm. Whether they want to be or not, they are connected. <laughs> you said Lil Kim did a year and a day. Uh-huh. And like a year later is when Foxy had her exactly. surgery and had her hearing fixed. So mm -hmm. maybe there's something to it. Hmm. I'm not going to say that it didn't happen. <laughs> I just can't prove that it did. Yeah, because her hearing was restored about a year later. Yep. From what I read, she still does have to wear hearing aids. Right. So I'm kind of jumping ahead now, but that might make sense in regards to that performance we were watching right. yesterday. She did a performance a couple of years ago on Candy's, one of Candy's tours. Yeah, the uh, Welcome to the Dungeon tour or something yeah. like that. And she was just performing really erratically. And the DJ was saying how she showed up late, didn't come to sound check and stuff. So some of that could play into it. But it also looked very obvious like she was getting cues from her hype man and she was yeah. like rapping the wrong lyrics to the wrong song. So to me, it looked like she may still have some hearing issues. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because just like in the video, when you can see him kind of give her a cue, it's the song with her and Blackstreet. Right. And she starts talking about Total. Yeah, shout out to my girls, Total. And rapping a completely different song. And yeah. then she kind of looks at him for a little bit and he gives her a cue and he starts rapping the words. And yeah. then she jumps over to the Black Street song. Yeah. So it seems like they've got some things worked out where she can read the lips and figure out where she is with the song, but she can't really yeah. hear. Because like you said, it was a really strange performance. Yeah, because it's one thing to forget lyrics. Yeah. It's one thing to have to rap over your own vocals. Like people do that. But she was 
just disoriented, it seems. She looked disoriented and she was totally doing like the correct verse for the wrong song. Right. Like she was doing the correct verse for the Total song when yeah. she was shouting out Total, but it was the Blackstreet song yeah. that was playing. And then she was able to just go right into where they were at that point in right. the Blackstreet song. Like she so, jumped right into it. Yeah. So it's not like she actually forgot yeah. the words. Yeah, so she knows the words. She was just on the wrong yeah, song. Yeah, he had to come and tap her basically. Yeah. So I don't know. There seems to be maybe some issues with her hearing. Yeah, stuff. although she hasn't really said anything. Some though. residual issues from that. Yeah, and probably doesn't help when you don't do sound checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you have to do those type of things just to perform, you should practice it. Yeah, <laughs> you just can't show up and all right, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not really sure what's going on with that. As much as the two of them have done many interviews and people ask them about it, it's just kind of a mystery other than they don't like each other. Yeah. Like for years, it died down mm -hmm. and then just like again in 2010 or something, it flares up again, just yeah. out of nowhere. 2011. 2011, 2010, somewhere yeah. in there. Foxy comes out with some freestyle yeah. or it's called Massacre and it sounds so bad. It does. Like just the way it's mixed and it sounds like she's rapping underwater or something. <laughs> Like it was so garbled that I couldn't even really hear what she was saying. So yeah. I like, I can't even be like bars because I have no <laughs> idea. And the thing is, it had these random gunshots through it. So they needed to like <laughs> turn her vocals up. So I couldn't turn it up to hear her vocals because if I did, I'd hear gunshots in my ears <laughs> right. really loudly. So I'm like, I don't know what to say, but I don't know if this was good. Maybe I need to find like a lyrics video or something. <laughs> I'm sure there's one out there. Yeah, it just sounded bad. Like, not just the garbled vocals, but, like, it just sounded like she recorded it in a basement. Yeah. Or something it, else. It's not very good. She just decided to jump in when Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim started beefing. Right. And, of course, she sided with Nicki. Of course. Just because if you're anti-Kim, I'm <laughs> pro you. Yeah. <laughs> so Either you with me or you against me. Yeah. But opposite? I don't know. Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> So, yeah, just 10 years later, here they are beefing again. Yeah, so, of course, Lil' Kim had to be a little shady about it when somebody asked her. So, in an interview with uh, WrapUp.com, they asked her, uh, Foxy Brown released a disc record aimed at you called Massacre. What did you think of that? Did you hear it? This is what she said. I don't think she heard it. <laughs> I don't even, I couldn't even. You know what? Next question. That was the biggest <laughs> joke of the industry ever. Hilarious. Oh, I don't man. understand it. Wow. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that is probably the best line out of all these quote unquote diss so. tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although Bang Bang was good. It was. That though, it was good. It, it's a good zinger. Yeah. And that's just a little one off comment. <laughs> right. In an interview. Uh, so in 2013, Fabulous was performing at the Hot 97 Summer Jam, mm. and he wanted to bring the both of them out to perform and finally put this whole thing to bed. Mm -hmm. They both agreed to it, and Foxy allegedly showed up late, mm. so she didn't get a chance to perform. That's what Fab told everybody, that she showed up late so she couldn't perform. Foxy says she decided not to do it because she felt it was fake. Yeah. So she just thought it was not on like legit terms for them to be out here making up after all these years. It was just done for publicity. Yeah, because she said they hadn't even talked before yeah. that. I get that portion of it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, y'all adults now. <laughs> you both have you children. 17, 18 yeah. anymore. <laughs> even if it is on some fake shit, you don't have to be best friends after. They're just come out, do a hug and go on both sides of the stage. <laughs> if Monica... <laughs> And Brandy can do a verse together <laughs> right. when Monica allegedly punched Brandy in the face. <laughs> in the face. Before allegedly. they performed together. <laughs> at, what was it? The Grammys? I don't know which what show the, it was. One of these awards shows. If I can perform with the person who punched me in the face. Two minutes ago. <laughs> these who can just come out and give some fake hugs. <laughs> and then go back to talking shit about each other. <laughs> say, we've grown up. We've moved on. I got nothing to say about her. She's got nothing to say about me. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. Oh, I can't remember now what Foxy was referring to, but I did watch another interview where she was trying to do something with Lil' Kim and she said, Lil' Kim said, I don't want to. And then her last words was typical. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Just get over it. Yeah, I don't know. 
it was confusing. This whole thing is confusing. To me, it doesn't feel like a typical rap beef, even right. though they have songs. But This it is just, definitely personal. Yeah, this is just like, I don't like her. That's it. <laughs> I don't think we'll ever get the actual truth. It's been this long and neither of them has said it. So Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll ever find out why they were beefing. And it seems like now in the last mm, 10 years or so, it seems to be more on Foxy's side that kind of is keeping it going. Because in 2020, when Nas released his first, what's the album called? King's Disease. King's Disease, the first one. And he did a song with The Firm. And so she had a verse on it. And I saw that she had made some like shady (laughs) Instagram posts said something like you had 10 years to make a hit and I'm out here with one verse and everyone's talking about me. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) Just let it go. (laughs) We're just kind of like everyone's response. Well, half the people are like, yeah, Foxy's back. And the other (laughs) half is like, you getting too old for this shit. (laughs) Yeah. Just let it go, man. (laughs) Oh wait, I do have it written down. She said, gave bitches 10 years and they ain't drop a single bot. One verse streets on tilt. Mic down bitches. (laughs) Oh man. Just stop. The song is called tilt. (laughs) Stop. But you know what? I thought maybe because that Massacre freestyle was just mixed so badly, I thought maybe that's why her voice sounded so weird. But even on the Full Circle song. No, she just sounds a lot different than she yeah, used to. Yeah, it just has this kind of like warbly sound. I don't, did the hearing affect her voice? I think it's just like age maybe. and Maybe she hasn't been lifestyle. taking care of her vocals. <laughs> yeah, it could be a, a huge variety of reasons. Yeah, because she used to have like a throaty, deeper voice. Yeah. Although, okay, now I'm going to bring it back a little bit. When Diddy was like, stop trying to sound like her bitches. She did change. She then. did. I did notice on the second album that her voice changed, but I never thought that she changed it to sound like Little Kim, though. I just noticed a voice change. I can see it. I can see why someone would say that she's Mm -hmm. trying to take Kim's style. Well, I think now I can see it because I was listening to both of their albums back to back. Right. And I'm like, okay, I guess I can hear it now. But at the time, I didn't think anything of it. Yeah. So technically, we could say they had a beef, but I can't really say like who won because this isn't really a competition. It's just two people that (laughs) don't like each other. Hate each other for whatever reason. Because I was just going to ask if you had a favorite song. of. I don't. What happened? Me neither, because it's like. Uh, and then the the songs that they had where they did like dig at each other. I don't like any of those songs. Yeah. I like their other songs. <laughs> right. But the songs that they're talking yeah. about each other were just. Eh. Yeah. Like, like the I, closest one to it would be the bang bang for me. But I just don't like the song. Yeah. Same. So and that's probably as close as it's going to get. Yeah. The only way I could say I can pick a winner is if I look at their body of work. Right. So in listening to this stuff back to back, I realized that I listened to more of Foxy's albums. Okay. Whereas I listened to more of Kim's singles. Okay. So if I had to pick who I liked better, I came to the conclusion overall, I like Foxy Brown better. In terms of, like I said, I would listen to more of her full albums. Whereas with Little Kim, I found that I liked singles more than a full album. Well, it was that way with me, but I didn't like full albums with Foxy Brown either. Yeah. With both of them, I just like the hits. Mm. Like the, the album stuff really didn't do much for me. I liked her first and her third as full albums. Okay. So the first album, Il Nana, and then the third album had much more of like the reggae West Indian. Yeah style to it but it really suits her too i think after that i kind of stopped paying attention right so just based on the songs we've listened to and some of the mixed songs that were terrible and some of the songs that were mixed well and just weren't good (laughs) (laughs) i can't choose a winner in this yeah and i guess you can't either i can't so if you guys want you can just listen to the playlist that we're putting together Mm -hmm. listen to all the songs and you too can be confused like we are <laughs> and just go back and listen to that old shit like Rihanna's cousin says to <laughs> to kind of cleanse your palate. Yeah, the only way I could pick who won this beef is just to pick who you like better. Yeah. <laughs> because the actual <laughs> diss tracks were eh, on yeah, both sides. <laughs> they didn't do anything for me. Same. So we're going to end this episode here. And as we mentioned before, this is the second in a series of episodes we're going to do about hip hop beefs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're going to do next, but stay tuned and we'll have more for you. So we're just going to end here. You got anything to say before we get out? Um, really? (laughs) I was going to say bring the beefs back. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Somebody chose violence tonight. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) 
on that note <laughs> we are going to get out of here and as always thank you for listening make sure to rate review and subscribe you can check us out on your podcast service of choice and yeah just hang out with us and be patient come back and see us in like two weeks or so <laughs> why are you telling them to be patient i don't know maybe they want... a, we've always done it every two weeks i know but maybe somebody <laughs> wants something next week that's all you gotta be patient wait two weeks all right <laughs> all right bye bye